All right, so um, now I'm in my Accord. I call this thing the Beast. This car shakes so much more than my Accord. Uh, I got this really weird exhaust under here where I, since my Cadillac converter got cut, I actually just put a, um, uh, let's see, I went down from the exhaust manifold to the down flex pipe to just the Cadillac converter to a pipe and then to a cherry bomb with an angle on it. I call this one the Beast. You know, this is my car. Uh, the Accord is just one of those cars, man. This thing is a monster. Uh, let me make sure I got everything in. There we go. This one shakes way more, and I don't even know if my thing's gonna hold up. We'll find out in the next few minutes. You know, what this thing will do. It's loud, it's rough. Um, this one will never be smooth. I just like it just the way it is. Uh, you can't really um, get mad at the car because the car is a monster. I never wanted to make this car beautiful. Um, I used to like cars clean with a lot of, you know, just no decals on it, maybe some rims. Sorry if it shakes because this one I told you is a more rougher car. Uh, the next thing I'm doing on this car as well is the um, suspension. That's what I'm doing on this car, period. You know, I love suspension work, but I just haven't gotten into it. Here out loud, it's loud too. But I like it like that. Um, I like my cars to be completely different. I don't want nobody to uh, have the same car that I have. I can't afford to have the same car. Let's see if I can turn this a little bit. There we go. You know, I can um, work on this engine pretty well. Um, one day I was in the junkyard, I found the Honda Acura 2.2, which you rarely can find a 2.2. I was very surprised. I took the valve cover you know off of it I'm trying to go back to get the coilovers off of it uh, that's gonna be my next uh, big thing is the coilovers off of it um, it was there for like six months I need to get it for they crush the car or source the parts out and if they do I don't care I'll give you a, a, a tip there's a junkyard up in Tri County called LKQ that's the one that is um, you can't go in there with money you go in there with money you're gonna mess around and you're gonna buy too much junk parts out of that bad boy. So that's all I do is buy parts out of LKQ and uh, uh, you pay, you pull, and jacks. Those are my three junkyards. Um, I don't go to foreign albums, artists, auto salvage no more. I think you can't even go in the yard from what I know. Um, I'm just a big time guy who likes, who likes junk. You know, I like junk yards. Um, this car has tons of parts from different Acuras on it. Um, I have Acura seats in it. I think I said that before. Um, I have wheels that come off of a Civic, which actually I can match on the Accord or the Civic because they have two lug patterns. I always look for cars with two lug patterns. Sometimes I can't find them because the front wheels I found were really nice off an Acura. Again, this is my beast. This is my bread and butter. The weird thing about this car that I had never knew for a long time when I was driving is the air conditioner works damn good. I had to, I had never used air conditioning in my cars. I never have because uh, I always felt that, you know, they just never worked because I had old used cars. So one day I was hot. I said, I wonder the air conditioning work. It was so cold, I opened the door up. This guy walked by like, God damn. So when it get real, real hot, I used the air conditioning in here. The only downside to this car that I have going on right now is that my um, in my manifold, I got like two bolts, I think, that broke. And next year, I plan on pulling out both the bolts, but I have to take it off and have a guy come in and professionally remove it. That's the only thing I have to do because uh, at this point, you can um, do it yourself, but it's a pain in the ass. So I'm gonna have a guy do it for me. It's gonna cost me about $175. If you take it to the if you take it to the Honda dealer, the Honda dealer's gonna charge you like $200 a boat just to do it. I mean, it's dumb expensive. But because I know all the guys down at the Honda dealer, they're going to give me a deal on the, you know, just having the work done itself. And I can't wait to get it done because once I get it done, I'm going to have this damn thing on the e way because this is my touring car. That's why I like this one so much because I drive this one everywhere. And once I finish the exhaust and I do some suspension work, I'm going to drive this thing across the United States. I, I'm dreaming of it because everything is done on it. It's ready to go. Uh, one of my top things about Hondas are if you just oil it, 
you put your plugs in it, you make sure your gaskets and your hoses are good, and you just keep the car going, man, these things will run forever. Um, I'm hoping I have this car at least another 10 years. And somebody said, well, when you say stuff like that, the time is going to jump. No, you don't. You say that because you want your car to last. So, again, I'm just popping up videos now. It's like my vlogs on my Hondas. Now that I have a couple other hitches, I'm going to get some more stuff so I can uh, film on the outside, um, do some rolling car shots and some more stuff. But this is the hobby I'm, I'm living. Uh, one of my dreams uh, that I'm working on now you know, sometimes they say you don't say your dreams, but unfortunately, I'll say it. Uh, I've been working on land for a while. I don't sold a bunch of my old land, which a lot of people don't. I'll never tell nobody about that. But um, I'm trying to get like 20 acres so I can make me a rally track. If it ain't, it's going to be like a rally toge track. I'm telling you, I'm going to do it. Just give me another year or two if the United States is still floating. I'm going to have my rally rat toge track. Watch. I don't care. All right, guys. That's all I wanted to do on this one today, my second little vlog on my Accord. This is a 2001. Um, again, one of my favorite cars, man. Uh, only thing I can tell you about Hondas, if you get a chance and you ain't never owned one, grab one. I would love to own a Subaru. I just don't know nothing about a Subaru. That's the problem. I, I don't know nothing about Subarus. I know a lot about Nissans, um, Toyotas I do. But for some reason, I know a ton about Buicks. Um, I know a ton about Cadillacs, but for some reason, I just love ride, you know, riding the Hondas now. And you know, people like to throw that ricing term out. This guy told me, you know, I was a ricer, and I looked at him. I was like, you know, I didn't even know what the term was. He's like, you know, um, what is it? Real enhanced cos? I don't know. Realistic enhanced cosmetic enhancements. I don't know. Racing inspired cosmetic enhancements. That's what it was. And I looked at him, and at the time, you know, I'm gonna hit on this before I leave. At the time, I had never even heard that term. And the weird thing about that term was, I said, well, is it really rice? And he was like, yeah, this, this, that, and the other. And I said, well, you know, I had to go back into what my dad taught me. I know one thing, my dad used to build cars and he knew a lot about cars. He could tell you stuff about cars, you know, that, you know, your normal guy who knew a lot about cars. And when I was driving, this Honda was whole at one time. And I was driving back and forth to work and the gas prices was going bad. And I'm like spending my, I, I need to figure out a way how to save some money. So for a couple years, you know, it was like a year. And I said, well, damn, why don't I drop weight out the car? That'll help. So I started tearing everything out the car. I took the door panels out, the carpet. Uh, I took everything out, set my headliner, which I'm doing today. You know, hopefully sometime today. I took the back seat out, all the stuff in the trunk and not all of it. Then I said, well, you know what? I found some light racing wheels. I put them on the back. I put some racing wheels on the front. I got some really nice tires. And I was like, then I vented the hood. I actually put a cold intake on it, opened the bumper up to get a little more introduction. And at the end of the day, I had did the calculations and found out that I was saving about $25, $30 on gas. Now imagine if you working Monday through Friday. You working Monday through Friday, 360 days a year, and you can save about 20 bucks a week. Somebody said I was bullshit. I said, no, I actually did that. I, I knew just how many minutes I drove to work, which direction I went, and I don't really stray from my direction where I drive. I drive the same way every day because I know if I drive this, I'm going to keep this much gas in the car. Some days I'll go off if I have to go to the hardware store, but 90% of the time I stay on the exact same route. I will hit Spring Grove, go up behind Norwood, go all in the back roads, hit Montgomery Road, back street in Silverton, Ohio, then Plainfield and work. That's the same way I went every day for the last 10 years. And that saved me money. So I was like, how am I doing, you know, racing and, you know, cosmetic enhancements? I put a roof rack on my car. I built it out of PVC. I didn't pay for it. I got it from some junk. I put a big black pipe at the top. The guy was like, what's that? I said, it's my fishing rod holder. I got a water jug at the top of the car. I got a boot rack I made in the back. And I have this thing back here that I travel around that I take my dry cleaning. Now I got two spare tires in the back so in case I ever get a problem, I got spare tires. Once again, it's my creativity. And I said, my stickers is because I was a commercial artist and someone sold me a cutter and plotter who wouldn't make a lot of stickers. My dad used to do this kind of stuff, but he did stencil stickers, all you know, stencils for everybody, even on tires. So all that shit you see now, my dad was doing that shit back in the 60s, man. And I was like, y'all niggas don't know nothing, or people, excuse the French. Y'all don't know nothing. There's a lot of people that knew a lot about drifting, toge, drag racing way before any of y'all. I just know that the younger crowd that I see doing it now, I'm totally impressed. 
because these guys are going further and further with it. And I'm like, this one guy was telling me stuff about this car. He's like, that's 20 in there. I didn't even know. So that's all I kind of wanted to say. Let me get out of here because I'm about to take off. But do your car the way you want to do your car. I don't give a fuck. I seen people with different mods and I was like, that's where you were at one time with the fart cans and all the stuff. So everybody has to progress this different way. All right, guys. Thanks for being here with me at, at this is my Bosu America, you know, volumes. I'm going to start doing the, my vlogs and I hope you enjoy them and I'll do some more soon. All right, guys. See you.